I never ever wanted to make a video like this ever again. Man, who am I kidding? I love complaining. Hey everybody, it's your boy Joseph Rothschild, aka MBT, and I thought I would talk a little bit about something that happened this week. If you're unfamiliar, Konami had a shareholders meeting, which basically means that the individuals who have invested into the business get to offer their direction and insight into how the business is being run and concerns they might have about the direction in which it's going. At this meeting, some concerns about Yu-Gi-Oh were raised, and I think not only are they worth talking about because they relate to Yu-Gi-Oh's present, they also potentially direct the way that Yu-Gi-Oh will be released in the future. So let's talk about them here. First, I'm just going to read the relevant piece of text from the shareholders meeting, and if you've already seen the Team APS video, Paul, you gotta give me a day. Regarding Yu-Gi-Oh content, I'm concerned that two things may have a negative impact on growth. The first is that we have not been able to successfully acquire new users. New users who started with Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel also started on Yu-Gi-Oh OCG Duel Monsters. Due to differences in the environment, etc., the know-how of Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel cannot be used for some reason, and they may quit. I actually met a player at a Yu-Gi-Oh OCG Duel Monsters tournament recently, and this was the case for them. Isn't it necessary to consider how to eliminate such cases? The second point is the poor appearance of the competition match video distribution. Judging from player and online opinions, streaming of official Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments is one-sided. This often leads to a decrease in player motivation and new users to play Yu-Gi-Oh OCG Duel Monsters. I think it's connected to the difficulty of surrendering. Surrendering is not currently permitted by the official rules, and if surrendering is recognized, it will create a strategy to restart the next game, and the game may be more interesting to watch. Please consider it. To me, this touches on two major issues. We'll deal with the second one first because it's pretty easy to talk about. Surrendering should be legal. Unironically, some of the most hyped card game coverage I've ever watched is where one player gets off to an enormous lead and the second player just scoops so the opponent doesn't know what they're playing. Strategic concession is cool. But the first concern touches on a much bigger problem, arguably the biggest problem that Yu-Gi-Oh has experienced since its inception. It is really hard to get players to play this game. Yu-Gi-Oh gets larger and larger with each passing year. Each subsequent YCS season, we are breaking all sorts of records. The Philly YCS was the largest North American YCS ever, but not by a lot. When it comes to paper play for Yu-Gi-Oh, there is a lot of money left on the table. It's staggering to think that the best way to play Yu-Gi-Oh Online ever came out under 18 months ago. We had the biggest name streamers in the game, Ludwig, Charlie, Iron Mouse, Saikuno, all looking to play this game that we all know and love. And what did that translate to? Maybe an extra 100 people at a YCS? For some reason, the renaissance of Yu-Gi-Oh's cultural impact has led to probably a couple dozen people entering the game. Why did this next-gen simulator fail to convert? Let's talk about the Master Duel problem. In my estimation, there's three main things that are preventing Master Duel players from becoming paper players. The first is the format. Obviously, a discussion of Master Duel's format has to begin with the elephant in the room, or rather, the Earth Insect. Master Duel's metagame is completely warped around one card in particular, Max C. The concerns raised in this shareholder meeting are exactly on point. You cannot guarantee that you'll be able to take the lessons you learned in Master Duel to paper play because so much of your deck is dedicated to exactly this card. If you try and make the jump to the TCG from Master Duel, you're going to find not only that you are restricted in terms of deck building, uh, cards like Crossout are a lot less valuable when you don't have to negate the Max C or die, I guess you could make an argument that even if Master Duel isn't a sufficient bridge to TCG play, it at least should give you some insight into how to play the OCG, except the Master Duel format is completely different anyway. Listen, I don't want to get into a big fight about if the TCG ban list or the OCG ban list is better. I think they both have their pluses and minuses. But at this point, Master Duel has meaningfully deviated from both of them. Look at Tier Limit, for instance. Both the TCG and the OCG have banned Kit Kalos, but in both the TCG and the OCG, the deck is still playable to some capacity. In Master Duel, you've got this weird hybrid of like 15 different forbidden lists and Reddit opinions, and the end result is a deck that is, yes, more powerful than it is in the TCG, in the OCG, but a lot more bricky and susceptible to hate. If you enjoy Tier Limit and Master Duel, you're going to have to not only rethink your entire deck composition, but also your strategy at a fundamental level before you step into paper play. Finally, there's no best of three. Again, I'm familiar that some OCG tournaments run best of one regardless, but I think it's worth talking about the fact that a lack of sideboarding really restricts what's allowed to be legal in Master Duel. Flu Under Ease is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. In the TCG, they banned that deck's most annoying Floodgate, and as a result, it's become a capable deck that gets a lot worse post-boarding. But in Master Duel, because there's no sideboarding, and because you're expected to play copies of Maxi in your main deck, Flu Under Ease is a lot more powerful because your opponent's deck is going to include some number of dead cards. As a result, it's endured like five different waves of hits that have never manifested in the TCG or the OCG. God forbid you enjoy Flu Under Ease and paper play, and then show up to Master Duel to be told you can't play it. Secondly, time. 
I mean, Jesus Christ on this. It's no wonder you can't get people into paper play from Master Duel. A significant amount of the decks that are represented at the top in paper play don't even exist yet. When Master Duel first released, it was about nine months behind the TCG in terms of card releases. That made sense. That's about the length of its dev cycle to my understanding, but that's a huge disconnect from paper play. And keep in mind, that's just the TCG. The OCG is about six to seven months ahead of the TCG in terms of card releases. So if you're an OCG player loading up Master Duel, you're playing a game that's already about two years old, a format that you have already experienced and a significant amount of the time, one you're sick of. If you want to move into paper play after playing Master Duel and aim to play a top tier, your options are pretty limited. Right now, the TCG is composed of Cash Tira, a deck that does not exist in Master Duel, Sprite, a deck that does exist in Master Duel but has access to Elf, which the TCG hasn't for months, Dragon Link, a deck that is very banlist dependent and as a result has some of its many thousand potential playables legal in Master Duel but not all of them, Branded, which is currently undergoing its like sixth wave of hits and is missing a ton of stuff, and Labyrinth, a deck we got yet yesterday. God forbid you want to play a deck from Sayak or Dune. Good luck finding Pearly or Super Heavy Samurai or Monadium on this client anytime within the year. Like, it's embarrassing that for the past six months, the TCG format has been dominated by exactly Cash Tier of Fenrir, a card that came out in Darkwing Blast, a set that is nine months old, and we do not have in Master Duel. This causes a huge disconnect for paper play. Speaking as one of the individuals who helped run the Master Circuit series, the problem we kept running into is that pro players were hesitant to join because they had to learn an entirely new format. You couldn't just translate the skills you learned from playing the TCG to Master Duel because the format was so wildly different. One of the other huge issues with the unbelievable time between a card's release and its release on Master Duel is format fatigue. I love Tier Limit. I am one of Tier Limit's strongest defenders, but I am not willing to sit through six months of tier limit in paper, followed by a one month reprieve, followed by six months of tier limit in varying states of legality on Master Duel. I'm sick of the format. It is a hard sell to tell players, remember that format that was really frustrating? Well, guess what? You get to relive it again. And finally, arguably the biggest issue with converting individuals from playing Master Duel to playing paper is complexity. This isn't just a Master Duel problem. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh problem. You all know I dunked on Act Man, but I do agree with his point that Yu-Gi-Oh is very, very complex. The reason the Ludwigs of the universe didn't become Yu-Gi-Oh players is because the game is too hard. The clip where he's frustrated about ass traps is funny for sure, but it's also illuminating. There are cards that exist in a hidden information zone that can counter your plays is something that new players run into out of nowhere. There is no indication that a card like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring exists from the Yu-Gi-Oh new player experience. That shit is not in a starter. Currently, the only bridge from downloading Master Duel to becoming a competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player is losing constant all the time to cards you have never seen that all have a novel's worth of text on them and do things you are completely unprepared for and unable to intuit. When I say that Yu-Gi-Oh is a lot like a fighting game, this is one of the things I'm talking about. Now, in their defense, Konami has tried a number of times to create something that looks like a new player experience. There are alternate formats like Speed Duel that are meant to be an introductory product to get people into the game. The problem is Yu-Gi-Oh has become so divorced from the gameplay that you see in those introductory products that it's not helpful. Like, oh cool, Summon Breaker the Magical Warrior? What an interesting tutorial. Anyway, do you have a response to Marincess Blue Tang or can I take 30 minutes to set up a towers? As a result, Yu-Gi-Oh is really in an untenable position. The thing that differentiates Yu-Gi-Oh from other card games is that it is super fast paced. It does feel like a fighting game. You can get wall comboed to death and both players feel like they're doing absolutely crazy stuff the entire time. Unfortunately, a lot of the time that fun comboing off is zero sum. It's coming at the expense of the fun of the other player and the pieces you're using to do it aren't like little guys on a chessboard, they're more like dissertations. Is it any wonder that creator tournaments that begin and end with summoning the blue eyes white dragon don't translate into players that are willing to parse if Scareclaw cash tier's effect to negate the effects of monsters your cash tier monsters are battling is an ignition effect that activates or continuous effect that applies upon reaching a condition? <gasps> I think there may be ways around this. If you sanction Edison on Master Duel, but also continue to offer Ultimate Time Wizard tournaments, you give people an opportunity to summon big cool cards like the Stardust Dragon and a competitive outlet on which they can do it in real life. But realistically, if the complexity of cards only continues to increase, as it's done for the past 15 years, we're gonna eventually hit a breaking point. And I can't think of a clear indication that that point is coming than one of the most popular games in the last half decade, failing to generate any interest in paper play. 
As always, there does exist one solution to reduce complexity, but continue to get people to buy product. But I can't say it, folks. They'll hate me if I say it. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on the matter. I think this shareholder is exactly on point and I remain ever spooked about the future of paper play. I should note that I play Yu-Gi-Oh for a living. I upload videos pretty much every day, but I find myself only really opening Master Duel in order to play Master Saga and Master Roulette. I'm much more interested in what's going on in the TCG, and unfortunately, that interest cannot translate to Master Duel because it's just so far in the past and locked behind a format that includes a bunch of cards I don't want to play with. I hope Konami's able to solve the new player problem. I have high hopes for the new two-player starter deck, but based on the number of people that personally have told me they're interested in Master Duel and then eventually fall off, I'm not super optimistic. All right, kind of a downer. Bye.